Hello guys. So, I've had a couple of backers that have uh, voiced that they are having a little, little bit of problem, you know, getting started. Uh, how do I, you know, add a button to a form? How do I show a form? How do I, uh, how do I work with this and work with that? Uh, which is understandable. I mean, it's a completely new format. And uh, if you're coming from Delphi, then yeah, I can understand that this is confusing. So, uh, but again, if if there's anything, just reach out to me. If you're a backer, just you know, send me a personal message on Facebook, uh, or leave a message uh, on Patreon. Uh, I don't check Patreon daily. I have to admit that, uh, but I do check it at least you know once or twice a week. Uh, but I am available on Facebook, you know, 24/7. So just you know, send me a message, and I will happily uh, you know sit down with you, and we can do a video chat, and I can uh, you know go through this with you if you would like if there's something you're wondering about so uh i'm not far away uh, although i live in norway you know just send me a pm and i'll uh, i'll help you out so okay uh i'm just gonna walk you a little little bit through uh, a small project we're going to create a button we're going to have a uh, uh a text box and we're also going to have a list box and the idea is that when you, you type some text into the text box and click the button it will be added to the list box you know like you know it's a it's a very small thing but it, it might help get you started so for this example we're going to use a window model a windowed application and this is an application model that essentially mimics windows inside the browser so you can have uh, windows that you can resize, move, that have a, a title, uh, they have decorative icons like maximize, minimize, close, full screen, etc. So I'm just going to call this uh, tiny demo. Uh, demo of how to add an item to a list box. Okay, create. There we go. Now, the first thing that you will see is that the project overview here, you know, the files that are involved with your project is, you know, it looks unfamiliar compared to Delphi or Free Pascal. And this is because, you know, this is um, HTML5. And uh, in order to smoothly integrate with HTML5 and JavaScript, we, we have to adopt some of the, uh, the working style, if you like. You know, we can't, uh, uh, you know, trying to force, you know, the object Pascal in the Delphi way onto JavaScript uh, tends to have poor results. Uh, I tried that with Smart Mobile Studio and it was a disaster because you can't take a linear language and expect that to function uh, in an async reality. So uh, it is different. So in this example, JavaScript is, uh, well, JavaScript developers typically organize their applications in, uh, you know, folders and a lot of files. So every design is in a separate HTML5. They can, uh, they can also define, you know, they can have 10 style sheets, you know, uh, you know, just to organize it to make it easier to work with. Um, in our case, we have the one file called application entry point. This is your project file. This is sort of where everything is tied into. Uh, and this is also the first code that is executed when your application starts. And you're going to notice that we have some funky, uh, strange uh, include statements. Uh, so this one, application form in it, is actually replaced at compile time. So when the compiler, you know, meets this, it replaces it with the code that creates your forms. Um, so. In this case, we're using a windowed application, which means that we also have to tell the, the compiler that, hey, I want you to create uh, form one. I want you to create that automatically. So let's go into the build options. Now, by default, this should be checked. So that is actually uh, something I need to fix in the template uh, of this project. But for now, check form one and save. OK, so now the project will create that. Uh, form one when it starts up and it will create it inside here Which is hidden from you, but it's you know automatically generated code So let's just uh, go ahead and compile and run and see how it looks for now 
okay empty window and here you see the uh, the decorative icons I talked about this is the close window you also have a full screen icon uh, and the idea is that when you click that the the content of the form is you know blasted into full screen on your display this is very useful for embedded programming for example uh, if you're if you're making a menu system for example for a raspberry pi or you're you're designing your own game or uh, or an application that uh, needs to have you know full control over the display this one is maximize and minimize and this one controls the set order you know just like a deck of cards so you can you know, these are normal window features. And you can also uh, define in the property inspector which one you actually want to be there. So if you don't want full screen, you don't want uh, minimize, maximize, you can turn those off. That works. So, okay, this is now what we have to work with. Now, by design, I decided to, you know, create a folder called forms where I place all the form files. Uh, this is optional. You can create, if you go back here and we now, for example, take new file, new form, it will actually be saved here. So it's up to you how you organize it. But I do suggest that you keep uh, form files separated. It's, 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 it's just easier to work with. So, okay, let's uh, click on the Pascal file. Um, yeah, empty form, nothing special to see here. You'll see in the options here are the, uh, you know, the window icons I mentioned. So you can check those you want. You can also turn on automatically horizontal scroll bars, depending on the content size and vertical. But okay, let's get cracking. So we're going to need a button. So just grab that and pull it over. Uh, so you can't just, you know, click TQTS button. That doesn't work. You have to physically hold down the mouse button and drag it over. So it's drag and drop. So now we have a button and we can see the properties here. There are some, what can we say, properties that are common to every element. Uh, you're going to see them uh, everywhere like uh, display mode and position mode, especially. So HTML supports different ways of organizing elements. Uh, much more than we have in Delphi. In Delphi, we, all we have is absolute positioning. That's it. Uh, we can use, you know, alignment in order to automatically stretch and align, you know, horizontally or vert vertically. But uh, HTML5 has a lot more. So uh, it defaults to relative. Uh, I'm going to fix that so that it defaults to absolute positioning. But, but for now, we simply have to, let's say, relative, fixed, absolute. Okay absolute button also there is no caption involved we don't have a caption so basically what we do is that we populate the inner html this is also a common standard property inner html inner text and you can put whatever you like here as long as it's html for example let's do italic uh, add text and then i'm going to uh, yeah, like so. So this is, you know, standard HTML formatting for italic. So the add word is going to be italic. So let's see, save that, compile and run. Yeah, and now we have a button with italic text there, the first word. So you can you can put whatever you like in there. You can put images if you like, you know. It's a, it's a great freedom to be able to do it like that. So going to size a little bit now we're going to need an edit box again just drag and drop it is a little bit slow when you drag and drop elements but we haven't optimized the code yet so we have a we have a lot of cool stuff that we can uh, we can optimize and also multi-thread and uh, we're going to do the same here relative we're going to switch that over to absolute uh, input type text now there's there's a property called placeholder, and this is this is uh, sort of background text, you know, sort of grayed out text that you can sort of inform the user that hey, you need to type something here. So we're just going to type, please type some text. There we go, and we're going to save that. Next, we need a list box. Da, 
Da, da. Let's see, where did I put that? List box, come on. List box, there we go. And we're gonna just drop that there. Same thing, switch over to absolute and save. Uh, yeah, just gonna, a uh, little bit odd sizing on that button, but okay, it's okay for now. Next, we come to events. Now, we support ordinary Delphi events, you know, on click, et cetera. You can, you can set those by code because JavaScript also supports something called delegates. In fact, the Delphi type events that we're used to is tend to be called uh, a cold callback um, or an ASIC uh, procedure. So there's a little bit of terminology that get mixed up, but uh, okay, we're going to use something called delegates. And those are actually objective uh, events. And you can add as many as you like. Uh, if you want 10 on-click handlers, for example, connected to this button, no problem. And they will execute in the sequence that you added. It. But we only need one for now. So uh, mouse click delegates. Uh, I should also mention that this list will vary from component to component. Um, it all depends on the developer, uh, if he or she has exposed different events. Um, those that you see here are the common HTML5 uh, delegate uh, events that are exposed. But they, they will vary, especially uh, when I switch from working on the IDE to you know perfecting the RTL. Uh, you're going to see more and more funky events, and you can do more and more visually. Um, but yeah, let's add a mouse click delegate. Ta -da! Now we have a delegate object. So we can, let's just save that and refresh. And now you see you have a delegate object here. We can double click on that. And the IDE adds you know, a, a typical Delphi handler to that. Uh, so we are going to go for the list, but I'm just gonna rename that list box. Uh, hey, you know, widget one and two and three. So I'm just gonna call that list box. Like so, and we're gonna call this text box. Text box, like so. And again, save and refresh. Now, just to be clear, the, the ref having to, you know, physically save, physically refresh, that is only for now. I wanted to wait with any sort of autom automatic saving, automatic refreshing, because it's quite costly. Uh, every time you do a refresh, the unit is taken in, it's parsed, it's tokenized, it's compiled, uh, we subtract the, or extract the AST, the abstract symbol table, we go through it and it's, it's quite costly in terms of, uh, you know, CPU power. So I wanted to, to wait uh, until we can, you know, optimize a little bit. So it's a little bit manual now, just remember to click save and do refresh whenever you add something. Um, yeah. So let's go back here and we're going to do a list box, add. And here you can see you have a lot of stuff that you can add, uh, including delegates. You know, you can add delegates by code if you like, but the best way to add an item is using the async method that is faster. But uh, for, just for now, for sake of uh, doing something fast, you have the add text, okay. Perfect, and we're going to add from text box, text, oops, there we go, like so, build, oh sorry, let me compile and run. So okay, we now have an event on this that will simply take whatever text you have here and add it to the list box. Uh, so let's say, uh, first item, add, Okay, second item, add, yeah, you get the point. So working with these types of widgets is, it's quite easy. I, I find it easier to do this by code. I have to admit that, you know, I hardly use the form designer when I'm, when I'm doing web. Uh, I'm, I'm a code first kind of guy, uh, but yeah, I have to admit that there are some chores that are much easier to do with a form designer, of course, like we do in Delphi. Um, 
the challenge really is to come up with a good form designer that is faster than the one we have now. Uh, I, I must admit, I'm not really that good at coding form designers, but I gave it a good shot. And I think that we have a good foundation. So after a bit of optimization and, you know, working on the material as we progress from version 1.0 to 1.1, etc., uh, I can do more and more optimization and make this into a really smooth experience. So, uh, yeah. Well, that that's essentially it. Uh, very little coding, as you see. Uh, we just have an event handler on this, or a delegate handler. Uh, read the text from the text box, put that into a list box. And that's, uh, you know, this is one of the most, <laughs> one of the most simplest things that you can do, right? So it's uh, very easy. So yeah, I hope that helped. Uh, for those of you that are wondering, you know, how do I get started? I, I really should have like an introduction, but I've been so preoccupied with, you know, finishing these last tickets that uh, it's, it's quite daunting uh, and stressful for a single person because there's, I have to jump between so many different things, but uh, yeah, we are getting there. So uh, yeah, I we have essentially now the code generator for uh, for the protocol system, um, Ragnarok. That is basically it. And then I think we've covered all that needs to be covered for this version now, for the, you know, for the initial version. Uh, then all the technology is sort of implemented and then it's, it's polishing, you know, it, we go into code freeze, which means that I do not add anything new to the IDE. Uh, when all of us agree on that, uh, then it's all about testing, fixing, uh, you know, if there's something missing, of course, if we've forgotten, oh, we need a checkbox for this, then I will add that. But it's all about fixing what we have now and uh, focusing on making that as good as possible. Uh, also, the documentation, I can finally, you know, sit down and document every widget and component that we have. Uh, and common features in the RTL, how to's, you know, how do I write my own components? Uh, how do I do this? How do I do that? I can finally, you know, finish the documentation. Um, yeah, then we're good to go. So, yeah. So, I, I hope this helped. And again, if you need help, if there's something that, you know, oh, this isn't working or blah, 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 then just PM me. Send me a personal message or something like that. And I will happily. We can do a video chat. I can walk you through the steps. We can share a screen and I can help you out. Uh, I really want to be there for my backers, right? So I'm not far away. Just contact me. Uh, in 99% of the cases, there will be either something that you don't know, which is also my job. I have to document it. Or uh, maybe there's a bug that has snuck in, right? And that is really great that you tell me that because then I can squash that bug immediately. Uh, so yeah. Just contact me, guys. Okay. Talk to you soon. Cheers.